Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefski, and welcome to another episode of Back to the Primitive. This is a series that is dedicated to the creation, building, assembling, painting, and designing of our studio's 3,000 point Lizardman army. And as you can see, we have made some substantial progress on this army. We're actually almost fully completed with it. We're about 75% of the way done with this army. And so far it is coming out beautifully. It looks absolutely magnificent, if I do say so myself. <laughs> so in case you're tuning in for the very first time and you're not sure what this project is about, Back to the Primitive was originally a series that was dedicated to the creation of our Blown Splitter army for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. The problem though is that when I was making that series originally, I had a lot of bone splitter miniatures that I painted up, but my gaming group and I didn't really like playing Age of Sigmar all that very much. Uh, especially my friends, they didn't really care for the game too much. And since my friends are the reason why I'm able to make battle reports as well as content for my channel because they're pretty much doing it for free, they're just playing war games with me and I'm recording them, um, I'm not going to make them play a game they don't want to play. I mean, it's just that simple. So because of that, I stopped playing Warhammer Age of Sigmar, and instead we decided to focus our efforts primarily on Necromunda as well as Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Now, that was all good and fine, but the problem was I had all these Bone Splitter miniatures that were just kind of sitting on my shelf collecting dust for the most part. And so it kind of bothered me a little bit just because I don't like having things I don't use in my collections. Now, of course, you could say, well, Commander Cheapskate, you could sell your miniatures, and yeah, I could. But um, you're never going to get full price for the amount of time and effort you spend in painting up miniatures and assembling them. Uh, you actually get, you know, trust me because I buy used miniatures all the time. I'm really good at uh, haggling for prices and getting uh, the miniatures for a song. So because of that, I decided, well, I'll just put these guys to the side and I'll figure out something else I want to do with them. I was actually toying around with the idea of actually making a Savage Orc army for a little while. But then what ended up happening is that I went to my local game store one day. And there was this guy who was selling Lizardman miniatures. He was selling them used. And uh, he ended up wanting to sell these. And then that's when the idea came to me that maybe I could combine my Lizardman, the, 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 the guy's Lizardman that he was selling, with my Orcs and Goblin miniatures to create a hybrid Lizardman backslash Orc and Goblin army. The idea was that I could actually use it for both. And the reason why is because the physiology of the Lizardman and orcs and goblins are very similar. You have skinks, which are basically like goblins, and you have source wares, which are basically like orcs. So the cool part about this is I could actually use it as either an orc and goblin army or as a lizardman army if I wanted to. So that's the reason why we call these guys the Lizards of Waz. So I was able to get about $200 worth of miniatures for about 50 bucks, which is absolutely fantastic. I haggled the guy down to those prices, and then what I did is I combined the two sets of armies together to make one giant lizardman army. And this is the progress that we made so far. Now, if you guys have been watching our series for a while now, you guys have already seen these units here in the back. These ones have been fully completed. Uh, we actually talked about that. This is a unit of uh, 28, I believe, 28 uh, skink warriors. These guys are armored javelins, so they have little goblins making them up. Our unit fillers back here, actually not unit fillers, these guys, like these two orcs, this big stabba, and these two orcs, those guys are supposed to be a croxagore, or count as croxagore. So that way they have three Crocs of Gore in this army and this unit as well. We also have a Skink Priest. We've talked about these guys at quite length. We have 40 Soros Warriors armed with spears. And this unit is primarily made up, uh, actually it's actually made up of all Savage Orcs. So yeah, they're armed with a bunch of different weapons. We'll just count them as Soros Warriors armed with spears. So that is a huge honking huge unit. Cause all kinds of destruction. We've talked about this unit as well. Which is a unit of 36 Temple Guard. Carrying a slant mage priest, which is our slant right there. Let me see if I can just sharpen that image on that guy a little bit. Which is our little slant guy here. We've talked about this guy. So you can see, yeah, this guy's actually actually this unit actually has the source of wares in it because they're supposed to be like you know the temple guard that we have. So they're equipped with halberds as well as light armor. And they have another unit of 40 skinks back here. We have another skink priest in the right there on the left hand side. Three crocs of gore in this unit as well. Built in a horde formation. So these guys over here are House Slytherin. This unit here is known as the Guacamole Guards. The Slam Mage Priest is known as Kermit the Slam. We have the Saurus, which is our huge unit of 40 uh, Saurus Warriors. We also have our Karma Chameleons, which is our other unit of Skinks. And yes, all these units 
uh, traditionally, whenever you see armies in my channel, I have these really cool narrative, uh, very cool sounding names for a lot of the units that we have. In our armies, we take it quite seriously for these guys, but because these guys are a combination of orcs and goblins, this is kind of like a little joke in our army. It could be a little bit more lax than the names on this one. After all, the army is called the Lizards of Waz, like it's a plan the word Wizards of Oz, so that's the reason why we did that. <laughs> because I'm a nerd and I can do what I want. So those units you guys have seen. Now the two units that we actually have have been added to this army are this unit here of Saurus Cavalry. These guys are called the Jurassic Jousters. And then we also have a unit of three pterodons that we call the Charizards. And we're going to talk about those two units today, primarily. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about our Jurassic Jousters. So this is a unit of ten Saurus Cavalry. Saurus Warriors mounted on Cold One Knights. It's one of the most terrifying, hard-hitting units of cavalry in the entire game. Right up there with Dragon Princess of Kalidor, Mornfane Cavalry from uh, or uh, Ogre Kingdoms, as well as Chaos Knights from Warriors of Chaos. Now this army is kind of interesting because this unit's actually made up of two different types of miniatures. Like I said before, I bought a lot of Lizardman miniatures for about 50 bucks from this guy at my local gaming store. He actually had eight of them is what he ended up having. So he had the, the three command group up here on the top. And then what he had was uh, a mixture of guys armed with spears, I think, as well as uh, hand weapons. So he had it all mixed match. And he didn't really have any extra sprue with these either, so I couldn't trade out the arms. And that was one of the reasons why I was able to talk him down to the price I was able to. I said, hey man, you already assembled these. You don't have any extra sprues. I can't make them all the same. So that's one of the selling points I made to him, you know, to buy it for so low. I've also added two big stabbers. Mount those guys on 25 by 50 millimeter bases. So that way they can round out the unit as well and make it to an even 10. I'm actually thinking about changing the unit size on this one. I'm actually thinking about changing it to a 12 man unit. And the reason why is because I have one extra big stabber that I'm not using. And at the same time, I have like a little dragon statue thing from the Mage Wraith Throne kit that I bought a long time ago. So I'm thinking about actually using that for unit fillers. But we'll talk about that when we actually get to the um, future update, what we work on next. So these guys look really, really cool. What I really like about these guys is the contrast of color between the cold ones, which are traditionally green, and the Saurus Warriors, which are traditionally turquoise. And it makes a really nice contrast. Also, the metallic paints that you have on these guys, a lot of gold on these guys. For the design elements we decided to paint the shields a uh, orange color so that way it contrasts nicely with the turquoise paint. At the same time it also matches up our goblin warriors that have shields. So if you look here my skink units I actually have a couple of goblin warriors with skink shields and I painted those up in the orange color as well to make a nice contrasting color. So it just kind of adds to that overall look of unity to the army as well. Now the thing about cavalry miniatures, which is actually kind of crazy, if you think about it, when you paint cavalry miniatures, you're actually not just painting one miniature, you're actually painting two, because you have to paint the rider, as well as the mount that that rider is riding. So this one took a little bit longer. Um, the cavalry miniatures usually take longer, in my opinion, just because you have to do both, and you have to do a really good job on both of them. And so, uh, yeah, I learned how to quit cavalry models really quickly, because I pretty much made an almost all cavalry Bretonian army. Uh, during the lockdown of 2020 during COVID-19 pandemic. So I just kind of took those skills and transferred them over. So these guys look really awesome. What I love about Lizardmen is that Lizardmen are one of the most colorful armies that you can have in a game, in a Warhammer army. Because of all the exotic nature of the reptiles and the stuff that they have. Plus the Mesoamerican motifs that they have for the design elements. Like that helmet, for example, the head crest. And the war club this guy's carrying and that standard bear. Uh, very much inspired by Mesoamerican, so like Mayan, Incan, um, Aztec design elements in these units. So they look really, really awesome. I really like the way these guys came out. And of course we added our Badland base to these miniatures. Like I said before, a lot of these guys, Bone Spur guys, have this Badland Orkin Goblin base uh, motif that we did. And I just kind of stuck with it as well. Now in case you're wondering how we did achieve that effect, all we do is we paint the base, the top of it with burnt sand, and we dry brush it with terracotta paint by folk art and that's how we create that look so yeah these guys look really really awesome as well look absolutely fantastic just really like the way they came out and they fit in the overall theme of the army as well with a mixture of orcs and goblins as well as uh lizardmen really happy how these guys turned out so the second unit that we added to this unit of course are the charizards which is our unit of three pterodon riders 
And as you can see here, I got these used as well. Um, the guy that I bought these from, these were actually in pieces originally. So like he built what looked like a Ripper Dactyl, and he built like the Pterodon special character. And then he built this weird Pterodon slash Ripper Dactyl thing. But if you notice, like this one, for example, the legs are missing on this one. So there are no legs on this. So that was like one of the things, he didn't have the extra sprues. I'm like, hey, do you have the sprues for you? He goes, uh, no, I don't. And he wanted $200 for all of his lizard men. I was like, no, you're not getting $200. I was able to talk him down to 50 because of that reason. So that part was absolutely fantastic on that one. So I think this is Tic-Tac-Toe, I think is the guy's name. He's the uh, skink special character that rides a pterodon. Let me see if I can uh, zoom a little bit for him. There you go. So if you notice, I actually paint each of my pterodons a different color just because I wanted to add some variety to this unit um, because I can do what I want. This guy is actually a black colored, uh, darker colored, black colored uh, pterodon. And I was actually inspired from that kids movie, How to Train Your Dragon. They have this thing called a Nightwing that the main character rides. It's this black dragon with gray wings. I thought it looked kind of cool. So that's the reason why I decided to use that because nothing says I'm edgy like riding a midnight black pterodon creature. So there's the uh, character there. So you can see here, for example, like right here on this wing here, there's actually supposed to be um, some claws that go there, like this other wing here, but that was missing. So things like that. That was one of the reasons why I was able to get it for such a low price. Same thing with the riders as well. The Pterodon riders were not included when I bought these. So because of that, I was able to get, I just took some spare netters that I had from my Orcs and Goblin boxes and I just mounted those netters on top of them. Went with the traditional Night Goblin black robes on these guys just because it contrasted quite nicely with their pterodons that they rode. This one's a yellow pterodon, the other one's like a pinkish reddish pterodon. And then, um, so that's why I did that. And plus their black robes kind of, you know, match up with the black of the pterodon for the main rider. So that works out. Now, if you're wondering why I call these guys the Charizards like the Pokemon, it's because these guys are armored with Fire Leech Bolas, which give them flame attacks. So that's the reason why I got that name. So as you can see here, these look really, really cool. With this beautiful oceanic blue color for the stems. So that way it contrasts nicely with the uh, base work that we did as well. So as you can see here, they look really awesome. Really happy with the way these guys came out as well. What I love about or, uh, what I love about lizardmen especially is that if you paint your lizardmen the traditional turquoise color for their flesh and stuff, and then you pick out the gold accents of the metal they wear, it just looks really, really pretty. The gold and the turquoise complement each other quite nicely. And so it's one of the neat design elements about these guys that were really, really neat as well. So as you can see, we kept up the same Badlands motif that we did for the bases. And they look absolutely fantastic. Now the nice part about actually having this Ripper Dactyl here is that I can actually run these guys as Pterodons or as Ripper Dactyls as the need arises. So I'll just experiment with them and you know count them as whatever I want because yeah, maybe some people might be like, well, Commander Cheapskate, you can't put these guys in tournaments or stuff. Well, I really don't play in tournaments. I've had some really bad experiences playing in tournaments. Um, I find that there's a lot of immature people that like to play in tournaments, so I don't really play them too often. I don't trust a lot of gamers that I play against in my local area. Uh, for example, one guy that I beat in a game, he started crying and was just totally inconsolable, which was ridiculous. Another guy actually tried to pick up some of my miniatures and throw them across the room once. I almost got in a fight at that tournament, so that's the reason why I don't do permanent games anymore. You know, fool me once and fool me twice, never again. Actually, there's actually a third one too. I went to a tournament at my local gaming store and we found out that the guy that was pretty much just steamrolling over people, people were like, wow, this guy is really good at playing. Ended up he was using loaded dice the entire time. So, you know, why would you cheat at a game of Warhammer? I don't really know why you would do that. Um, you should just be playing for fun. And the crazy part was there was no prize in that tournament. It was just a tournament just for laughs and for fun. It was a one day tournament and it was just made for having fun. and. The guy had to cheat at that, so that was like the final straw for me. I'm like, that's it. I'm just going to play with my friends and uh, not deal with that drama and that nonsense. So tournaments have never really bothered me. I was like, oh, you can't do that because it's not a tournament thing. No legend tournaments. Yeah, I don't play in tournaments. I'm just a hobby friend, uh, basement hobby gamer, so I'll just do what I want. So that's what I do with that. So there you guys go. This is the progress we made so far on our 3,000 point Lizardman army. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to stop the video real quick. I'm going to go to my painting station and talk about the remaining projects that we have left on this army.
All right, so now we're back. We're back in my painting table, and these are the only things I have left to paint in my army. So these are the last of the miniatures that we gotta do. So basically the rare choices for my army. So first of all, I have a Bastilla down here with a solar engine, so it kinda says like that. I gotta paint that up real quick. So that's one of the creatures I gotta work on. As you see, it's fully assembled and primed and ready to go. What I need to do though is get some, or make some rather, some chariot bases. Some uh, chariot size base was a 50 by 100, I think it's what, no, not 50. Yeah, 50 by 100 millimeter bases. So I wanna mount this Bastilla on a chariot base so that way it works out for him. And at the same time, I have my extra big step that I have right there, as well as that Mage Wrath Throne uh, statue here. So I'm gonna paint those up as well so that way I can make my Sars Cavalry an even 12 if I want to. Um, not that I would fold them that way, but if I ever, the option ever came up, that just might be something I might do as well. And then, of course, we got our big one here. We have our Carnosaur. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to try to make a chariot base for this guy to stand on as well. This miniature actually came with this base when I first got it. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's a big space, but the problem is it's kind of like too big. Like, if you look at it, the base is like really, really wide. And it just looks kind of funky to have this miniature in the middle of this giant base. Now I know this base is used for Warhammer Age of Sigmar, so you know, kudos to these guys who play that, but I want to go with a more traditional look for my odd, for my Carnosaur, so I'm going to go try to make a cherry base for it to sit on. I got some spare MDF, I might cut those up to make it the cherry base sizes so that way he can sit on it and then use that as well. The only problem is I'm really horrible at carpentry. <laughs> I can't cut a straight line and my life depends on it, so I'm going to try to be really careful and try to get that uh, made out of MDF board. Then of course we have this special character, I believe, I forget what name he is, he's actually a special character that has like this gauntlet that shoots a laser beam out of it. I forgot his name, but I'm not use. I could use him as that special character, or I could use him as just a normal Saurus or Old Blood, or whatever I want to do with it. So I gotta paint him and then mount him on top of his Carnosaur. So that's the next thing. And then last I got my, uh, really, uh, really, uh, homemade, homemade conversion for my Troglodon. Uh, as you can see, I, I have the mat. The guy actually, the actually, guy I bought this from actually had the neck and the fin from the troglodon the kit, so I was able to get that. So I just put some green stuff and did a horrible job sculpting it, but that's okay though, because I plan on making like this swampy, like emerging out of the water type troglodon that I see a lot of people on the internet do. So that way they can make two monsters out of that kit. Well, actually, what I might do is I actually might take out, when I take off this carnosaur off this base, I might use that base for this troglodon. So that way it can make it look like really swampy and like it's made out of like nasty water. It might put some ruins on it as well. Really decorate the base to represent the fact that I'm only using half of a miniature to make this thing come crawling out of a <laughs> out of the water type of look. So yeah, it's completely cheesy and probably cheap, but you know what? I'm Commander Cheapskate, and uh, if you didn't know that by this point, <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do with that. So that way I can have like this emerging troglodon creature coming out of the, the water. Now, granted, if I paint these up, it's going to take my Lizardman army way above 3,000 points, but that's perfectly fine. I like to make my armies a little bit bigger than 3,000 points, so that way I have options, so that way I can switch out things and try out different things if I want to later on. At the same time, my, my friends can actually do the exact the same thing with their armies as well. They can customize them and change them out as well. So this is the next product that I'll be working on next, the next wave. And once I'm done with our biggins, our big monsters, uh, the army will be fully completed. And then once it's fully completed painting, we can actually start doing some battle reports. Because on this channel, we do hashtag painted before played. And the reason why I do the painted before played thing, I do it for two reasons. One, having a fully painted, uh, two, fully painted armies on the battlefield with Iron Major's terrain. It looks really impressive and looks awesome in our battle reports. So that's one reason why I like to paint up my armies before I play them. And secondly, it gets me disciplined to actually finish the job on the miniatures, you know? Because, you know, if you're not careful, you could just keep on playing with an army and have it never be painted. Nothing wrong with that, you know. But if you're one of those kind of guys who wants to have a painted army, that's one way to stay disciplined. It keeps you disciplined to finish the project first. So, like, if you tell yourself, no, I'm not playing it until I paint it, it makes, it forces you to paint it up. So that way it's all fully completed and then you can play it, which is really cool. So that's what I've been using, you know, for like the last handful of years of my wargaming career. And it's been working really well, and it's a system I continue to use because otherwise it just kind of sits there in your pile of shame and it never gets done. 
So it's a nice way to keep yourself disciplined. Also helps you save money too, because you know you might want to try out a different army or something, and you're going to spend money on that army. But you got nope. You got to finish up your army first, paint it up before you move on to the next project. And that's the best way to roll, because otherwise you can just get mired down in the bare plastic that's in your studio if you're not careful. So there we have you guys. Got a paint up Bastilodon, Carnosaur, Saurus Old Blood, uh, Old Blood, a uh, Troglodon, and then like two fillers for my Source Calf. And that's what I gotta work on next. All right, people, there you have it. This is the progress we made so far on our studio's 3,000 point Lizardman army for Warhammer Fantasy the lizards of waz as you can see we're actually making some pretty good progress on this army unfortunately this army took a little bit longer to paint than i originally anticipated i originally estimated it took me about three months to paint this up because uh, that's traditionally how long it usually takes me to paint up an army three to four months worth of work but uh real life sometimes gets in the way so i'm right sitting at the five to six month mark probably seven is probably what's going to end up happening when i get done with it just because you know i just paint on these guys when i have time and that's perfectly fine, because it's a nice way to distress. So yeah, that is the progress we made so far on the Lizards of Waz. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually end this video a little bit differently. I'm going to end my narration and my video clips right about here. Um, but I've gotten some comments from some people like, Hey, Commander Chiefsgate, when you do your army progress videos, could you do some, uh, you know, show some stills of your army, some close-up stills. So what I did is I actually did some little close-up shots, you know, of uh, in photo mode. And I'm going to actually do a little slideshow after I get done with this. So if you want to see those close-ups so that we can see exactly what the details look like on the army, um, that slideshow is going to start right after this. So that's going to do it for this week, guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blog.com for all the latest and greatest hobby news related to our channel. That's good for this one, you guys. You guys stay classy. Peace out. We'll catch you guys in the next one. And the slideshow starts now.